What is going on freelancers? This is Gino and welcome to another Anthem video. Today's another build guide for you and the spotlight shines brightly on the storm. Due to the elemental implications of this build, I have named it Shock Therapy. Shock Therapy is a combo based build which means we'll be utilizing both Prime and Detonator abilities to create combos and capitalize on maximum DPS. <laughs> Playing the VIP demo and I get to the point where the game says you can choose your next javelin and that is immediately when I went to the storm and I don't know what it was that actually took me to the storm but that's where I ended up I jumped into the storm I went on my first stronghold mission I think at that stage I wasn't playing on hard difficulty yet this is probably halfway through day one or a little bit way through day one and I got in there and I have to say I felt like I was immediately in love and I think part of this is actually due to the fact that I'm coming from a ranger javelin and I didn't realize how substantially different all of the javelins were. But at the same time, I felt like there was power to the ranger and there were great capabilities of the ranger. I just felt like because they were so different, because I was now doing something that did not feel anything like what I have been doing, I was just loving every second of it. And look, let's face it, the ability to hover for extended periods of time while having a much stronger shield and casting those spells at your fingertips having access to all of the elements blowing up your enemies at will like a god it just felt fantastic and then you add to that the most amazing particle effects that come with the javelin what's there not to like so let's have a look at the build, everything that I've got equipped that makes this build happen. And we're going to start off with the Prime ability, Shock Burst. Now there are a few reasons why I've chosen Shock Burst to be the Prime ability. I did test a lot of combos for the Storm and Shock Burst seems to work with my playstyle best and I kind of worked everything else around Shock Burst. The biggest reason why I chose Shock Burst is because it's got a very, very small cooldown. So you can consistently use Shock Burst pretty much two or three times within most fights and uh, you can follow that up with your detonator pretty quickly. Now if I just gave you that much information, it would seem it would have to follow up with a lot of questions. Like for example, well if you're going to prime that quickly, how are you going to detonate that often? Well, let me show you this first and then we're going to head into what I like to call the phase shift fist melee ability combo thingy. Anyway, what you're looking at now is a repeat of the jumping melee animation that the Storm has. Now, I've tested this over and over and over again, and technically the only time you can actually be hit within this animation is just after you land or just before you leave. So you can see here that I'm approaching this enemy and I'm consistently doing that same animation and I'm only taking damage pretty much as I land if they manage to shoot at the right time. My shield is only taking tiny amounts of damage and I'll be able to use that to approach my enemies in order to create a chain reaction or a combo. There are quite a few reasons why this particular combination works so well. The first reason is simply there is no cooldown on your melee ability. That's right, when you're playing the storm, you can use melee as much as you like and there won't be an effective cooldown in between. Now I know normally when you play a caster, you don't think to use your melee capabilities too much and that makes a lot of sense. You're a ranged caster, you like to hover around, but you know what? Using that dash strike type of ability within the melee move it actually makes it quite fast but using that no cooldown melee as a detonator gives you the capability of having a primer with a low cooldown and being able to use that combination pretty much over and over so we've got shock burst with a very short cooldown and then we're detonating with melee strikes that have infinite amount of usage 
then that leaves us with one ability that doesn't even need to be used to create a combo. Enter Lightning Strike. Now yes, Lightning Strike still is a detonator, but used alone, it does massive amounts of area of effect damage. Having two detonators, one that's always readily available, and a primer that has a very short cooldown, you start to get a lot of options, and in different combat scenarios, options are a great thing to have. But what we're not discussing is the true potential of damage in terms of using both detonators after you've only primed once. So this is where things get much more interesting. What we're doing is we're going to be priming the enemy with just one move and then we're going to be detonating twice, once with each other move available. Now this is great, or I'd like to call it a triple combo by the way, that's just me, that's just the name I'm going to give it. It's now a triple combo. So the triple combo is going to be possible when you have an enemy obviously that has enough HP to take that sort of damage. This is why we're talking about boss fights now, and what's good about having this versatility is yes, you're going to be able to put off a lot of damage. Now let's talk about skill rotations, and in particular in those fights where the enemy has a much larger health pool. Think world events or boss fights at the end of a stronghold. You'd be doing in the rotation something like Shock Burst, Melee, Lightning Strike, yes, the triple combo, and then Lightning Strike is on cooldown, so then you'd be pulling off combos that are just simply Shock Burst, Melee, Shock Burst, Melee, and when Lightning Strike comes back, once again the triple combo, Shock Burst, Melee, Lightning Strike. The thing about this is that you really don't want to get close enough as a caster to hit with a melee ability, and this makes a lot of sense, you know, and normally even a big enemy such as this one, I wouldn't approach them and get right in their face as a caster, but this is where we talk again about that animation that locks out damage, that animation that stops them from targeting you, and the one that you can actually use with melee infinitely. So as long as when you're using your melee ability to set off a combo that you're using it in the air to create that animation I think you should be able to even create a combo using melee on a boss as well now of course we're talking about these combos and these ideal rotations and really when we're playing these games we're not going to be entering a perfect world that would be boring and I suppose it would be much like fighting a combat dummy so when you think about it, in a true boss fight or even in an open world big enemy fight, you really want to be able to be versatile when it comes to the different ranges and uh, the amount of movement that you're going to require. This is what's so fantastic about this build because its strengths are you can pretty much pull off a combo from different distances from anywhere on the battlefield and keep yourself in the fight no matter what it is that you actually have to do. You'll be pulling off consistent damage and then when the time calls for it, you can pull off those triple combos so that you can really get those high numbers. At this stage it's important to mention that all things are subject to change because the game hasn't actually gone live, and it has been mentioned by developers that some of the abilities are going to switch between either being a primer, detonator or neither. So on the screen in front of you I've actually got a graphic to help us out and this gives us all of the updated information as far as live should be concerned with the storm. As you should be able to notice that the primer and detonator icons have changed and this is what they want to use going forward. So here is the primer and detonator for you to see for yourself and when you look down at the melee ability you'll see it's not only fire damage but it's also a detonator. Looking at components and in particular right now this armor reinforcement to be honest with you, I'm only using this armor reinforcement because it has the stats that I want on the tooltip. Now, it actually says 0% melee damage, but uh, it's been confirmed by developers that those 0% stats are actually another number there. They're just not showing up in the tooltip correctly. So you might be asking, why would you be going for a piece of gear that stacks melee damage, especially as a storm? Well, pretty much saying that any sort of build that uses a detonator as your melee ability because you're doing it so often stacking melee damage actually helps with that combo damage so because we're pulling off so many melee attacks having the extra melee damage on there is definitely not a bad thing 
Now they'll look at the shield reinforcement. Basically, I'm still going for that whole melee damage capability and I want the build to have as much melee damage as possible. So I've went for the shield reinforcement because it does have, again, melee damage on there. And once again, it's not 0% like it actually says. There are other options available for components as well. Something like a melee inscription would work pretty well. And since your melee abilities are actually fire, you can also go for something that boosts your elemental damage or fire damage. There are also inscriptions that give you combo based damage as well so maybe have a play around with it but make sure you're stacking the same thing and not just dibbing and dabbing a little bit here and there into different stats because you won't really see a much bigger result the way you do when you're stacking something like all of the melee damage put together. Now we're going to also look at stacking our melee damage throughout the consumables and uh, they are craftable in the menu just before you leave and go out into the world. For weapons, I've gone for Devastator and Scout Rifle, both really great at range damage. The Devastator, I think, is actually the favorite weapon amongst the VIP demo. It's also one of my favorite weapons. The reason why it's so popular is because it's got a one-shell clip that does massive explosive damage once you shoot it at your enemy. When it hits and impacts, it does that area of effect sort of explosion effect, and if you are hitting their weak spots, it does even more damage on top of that. It shoots at a really fantastic range being a sniper rifle, even though it still has an explosive round. And uh, to be honest, when you're looking at boss fights and you're taking on enemies that are debuffed, then you're going to really be able to pull off huge numbers in a short period of time and help pull your team through. The scout rifle happens to be my absolute favorite weapon in the game so far. The reason why I love it so much is because it's extremely accurate. It pulls off a decent fire rate, great damage, and it just reminds me of the DMR from Halo. Well, that's going to wrap this one up for today, guys. This has been a build guide for the storm called Shock Therapy. It's a combo based build using a lot of melee attacks, giving you very versatile options for real life combat. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I put a lot of effort into these build guides. And if you did, I'd love it if you left a like, even if it was just a little bit informative. Click subscribe if you want to see more of my Anthem content going forward. I will be pretty heavily covering this game as it goes live. And consider clicking on the bell icon if you want notifications in your inbox when I upload new content to the channel. Wow, I'm getting excited now. It's getting much closer. I'm a little bit wary though because there were a few bugs in the VIP. I really hope they don't mess this one up. Please don't mess this one up. Uh -huh.